good afternoon so this is a panel atmanirbhar so we will use both hindi and english and talk about atman atmanirbhar and ev electric utility uh so before we say that uh, we become atmanirbhar or become the world leader uh i was uh, glancing through a report by arthur the little a month back they produced a report and uh, which put india at the 11th position in the world on the fastest growing market for ev and norway was the number one country so you feel very enlightened very happy that while most of the rankings put you in beyond top 100 into anything in electric mobility you are already 11th fastest growing nation in the world uh, that's uh, the starting point but um, why i'm here and moderating this panel also because for 22 years i have been fighting for air pollution in delhi in the courts it's in my name sudhir mishra of union of india in delhi high court or even was decided on that matter is still going on and it's a ongoing battle and we keep on asking when are you going to reduce uh, the polluting scooters polluting trucks night entry of uh, out of station buses and trucks and all kind of stuff uh, before we go to this subject try understand that delhi had a better climate this year if we talk about delhi one reason was there was a 45% reduction in parali burning from the state of haryana which is for the first time in last 7 years it has happened and uh, another thing is that the delhi government has said that we will reduce uh, fossil fuel uh, vehicles for all the e platform services though they didn't specify when they will implement it but that's the business opportunity for all of you the third part is that while we only speak about electric mobility and atmanirbhar our leadership i was representing indian sugar manufacturers association and the kind of blending platforms they are looking at uh, blending of ethanol with uh, petroleum and the kind of stations they are coming up with in uh, around distilleries across north india they are going to compete with you as well so here we are so that will be a very tough competition because the blending is going to be like brazil where it is 40% and you can choose your fuel when you actually go to a station so with this background let's start with you uh sakshi what is your journey and how how you will describe about your company and where do you play your role in atmanirbhar bharat in ev so you know we um, i represent a company called miles automotive technologies we are in the business of engaging and building accessibility in vehicle ownership um as um, as difficult as that sounds when you're sitting at a 340 400 aqi in a city like delhi we believe that accessibility needs to be introduced even in electric vehicles one of the things that's extremely important as far as uh, electric vehicle adoption is concerned is to make it more accessible uh, one of the challenges of uh, electric vehicle penetration in a market like india is the high initial cost of ownership of vehicles uh what we are trying to do with subscription is actually enable a uh, a more distributed cost of ownership for anybody who wants to own this vehicle we also tend to reduce the um, hesitation or the anxiety that comes uh, on the residual value of electric vehicles uh, by ensuring that the customer the owner does not have to take any risk on the end value of the vehicle and we we bear all of that cost so our journey really has been from starting as a uh, as an entity which believes that uh, more and more people need to adopt vehicle ownership and it has to become easier we are only while we are the fourth largest uh, vehicle uh, market in the world um, the annual units of vehicle that are sold in our country which is about 3 million is possibly a month sale in china so there's a long road to cover as far as the overall automotive market is concerned uh taking the conscious call then to say what are the kind of vehicles that need to be introduced is where we work on electric vehicles and say how do we introduce accessibility there uh which is why vehicle subscription which is why ev subscription makes a lot of sense uh today about uh, i think every 100 people that contact us 50% of them are asking for electric vehicles because it just makes a lot more sense and that's the journey that we are on wonderful uh, good initial points akshay uh, arun uh, you will talk about the entire ecosystem of uh, because 
the parts are the big worry and the parts which define the electric vehicle are something we don't have any clarity. So how much Atmanirbhar journey has to happen there? Yeah, so um, what we do also isn't, isn't to something called as battery swapping, so similar to what Sakshi mentioned. Uh, we also reduce the total cost of ownership by taking the battery out of the cost of the vehicle so that you don't have to have the burden of uh, the, that cost, the, yeah, the maintenance when you have to replace the battery and all of that stuff. Uh, so when it comes to an electric vehicle, I think uh, um, you know a lot of things are, are being developed in India. Uh, more and more things are being developed in India. Um, I think everything else. So it also depends, right? Like so, there's a there's a way uh, this whole supply chain is structured. You've got the OEMs like the folks like Maruti, anybody who makes the vehicle. Then you've got tier one vendors, tier two vendors, and tier three vendors. Then fab vendors and everything. I think at the tier three stage uh, is where there's not much. Uh, things that are being developed in India. Uh, so that includes obviously the whole fab industry, uh, the semiconductors, the chips, you know, the entire world is probably dependent on two or three countries here. Uh, that typically now switching to electric requires more electric components, more semiconductors, more chips. They're smarter, they're more, they're autonomous and all of that stuff, right? So uh, there's more dependency on that. And because of that, generally the product prices, the overall product prices that the OEM now has to uh, make uh, is shooting up. Cost of the vehicles are shooting up, and because that because of that, now the whole second-hand market had gone up, right? So that was all the trend starting because of this. Then the other major component which we don't make uh, is is the cells, uh, the lithium-ion cells, uh, which you know are totally uh, imported either from China, Korea, or Japan. And again, even if we do manufacture the cells here, the raw material is completely in control of China over there. But uh, besides that, everything looks positive, uh, and I think we've you know a lot of motor manufacturers coming up. But Tata announced uh, something on the semiconductors yeah. and the chips a uh, few days back. Yeah. So not just on semiconductors, but also on the cell side. I think you know the four companies that were selected. So that's a good uh, you know uh, start. Uh, I, I was just answering standing as of today, but the future looks better, and uh, you know we got everything covered. We got like besides these also. There was a point of time when motors weren't, uh, you know, completely developed in India. That has changed. A lot of motor manufacturers in India now. And uh, hopefully in the next five to ten years, I think we could hopefully change this uh, scenario for the semiconductor and the cells as well. Yeah, yeah. good initial uh, observations. Uh, uh, Ankit, uh, before I come to you, I'll also ask you that as a lawyer, when I look at it, the flip-flop in the policy uh, for any... EV owner, like you used to give them the fame subsidy or uh, subsidy for buying an electric vehicle, but there is a lot of reporting across the country that on certain models and certain products, uh, people are facing problems in getting the incentive which they were supposed to get. And uh, the secondly, uh, the governments, uh, what is your industry body doing? I'm also very curious to know, like any industry body, like if the main automobile industry you talk about, they are so well organized. When we say that there is air pollution, they used to come and say, where is the pollution? We emit clean air. I'm honestly telling you, I've seen the kind of kind of battles in the court. They will hire the top five lawyers. And that's the case with pharma industry. That's the case with pharmaceutical industry. That's the case with the beverages company. When you will go wholeheartedly in, into it, you will have to become at least like NASCOM. Yeah, absolutely. So, okay. I, I don't know how aptly I can answer that, <laughs> but let me give you a background about uh, where I come from. Yeah, so sure. I, I come from an industry which is an sort of uh, extended version of electric vehicles, which is drones. Uh, drones are made to reduce the uh, carbon footprint by 70, 80% compared to the conventional means. Uh, we began the entire journey of drone as a logistics uh, part or drone as a service to provide logistics to different companies to reduce on their carbon footprints, as well as the time that it currently takes for them, and ease the entire process to get more cost-effective and scalable solution to be built overnight. Uh, if you look at the current logistics ecosystem, especially in the uh, last mile and first mile, it's too lacky, uh, it takes a lot of time, it's too expensive, and the sustainability part of that is still trying to be uh, trying to be taken over by EVs, but we are still very far away from there. 
it has to be a mixed solution which is going in today. Uh, with companies that we work today, uh, with, with the large e-com and quick commerce companies, enabling a everyday delivery uh, through drones are more likely to scale this up much faster than any other solution which is available. So in, in terms, it, it's an extended arm of EVs, and it's trying to help in a different way altogether. And the wider adoption of drones are happening in different sectors all across. So we're not just talking about Quickcom and Ecom, we are talking about agri-commodity. We recently did a delivery in Himachal, where we reduced from days to minutes. So it used to take days for farmers to bring the farm produce from the top of the hill to the bottom of the hill. And so many numerous challenges that they had. We reduced that time frame from days to six minutes. And, and, and we provide them larger uh, you know, support in, in terms of gaining that entire momentum and doing on a regular basis. That's, that's what I do primarily. Now coming to your question about the ecosystem and the, and the societies in general which are there currently, I believe there's a lot to, to be done over there. Uh, there's a lot of activities, there's a lot of things, there's a lot of fast moving approach which needs to be taken. And uh, though majority of the things are being governed or done uh, at the top end, I think the uh, ecosystem which is, uh, which is evolving in the bottom end needs to be a part of it. Uh, and it needs to be supported accordingly. So it's, it's not that CM has overnight become CM. Uh, it took a lot of time. And SMEV and other societies needs to be very proactively involved in pushing the entire EV story to all the, all the stakeholders across. Uh, it's the consumer who has to demand. It's the suppliers who has to provide. And you have to gain a momentum of bridging the entire thing between both of them. So that's Yeah, what well, uh, because uh, you talked about drone and then it reminds me. As an industry which has come on its own in such a short span of time, one reason was the quality of uh, organization you have on the advocacy side, Drone Federation of India. And Smith Shah does a great work there, um, taking it right to the top where it is required and bringing the best people to uh, ideate how to make it stronger. I think this is a point which will be largely neglected, but I'm saying it, and you have seen with your experience, the rules and regulations came faster there, and all the permissions of airport authorities and others were, must be very difficult initially. How did it happen? I just want a few more minutes on that. Sure. Uh, if you look at I'll give you a short example. Uh, it has never happened in the country that within a period of three months, uh, a gadgeted policy